Nick Tuminello here with my friend Deanna Avery, and we're going to talk to you about, give you my hip thrust progression. So shout out to my friend Brett Contreras, who really popularized this exercise. I get asked about progressions a lot. So you know the variations, but maybe you're unfamiliar with how to sequence them or put them together. So I'm going to share with you how we do it here. So we're going to start off with the hip thrust, shoulders elevated. Remember, a hip bridge is when you're flat on the floor. That's how we refer to it. And we're going to go to basically just a double leg hip thrust we're looking for there. So I would have Deanna actually spread her feet just a bit and pull her heels out just a touch. There we go. Okay. So we go there. Now some people like to support their neck. Other people like to spread their arms out. And really what I'm looking for her to do or not do in this case, and she looks like she's giving me a little too much lumbar extension. Come on down for a second, Deanna. Posterior pelvic tilt. Now hold that posterior tilt and come up as high as you can. Good. So that basically is a cue. I'm looking at those hips to make sure that she's not leading with her belly. So we're getting more hip extension, not as much from lumbar extension. All right. So that's where we would start. And I would like to see a minimum of 20 to 25 reps. Once we get there in good form, I'm going to have her bring her feet in a little bit. So now her knees are directly under her hips. And we're going to start from a bridge march. So I'm going to have her hold the position at the top. So I'm going to have her come down for a second, reestablish, posterior tilt for me. Now come up as high as you can. Hold that about right there. Now, basically, I want to see her maintain this tabletop as she takes her right knee and pulls it just above her hip. So she's above 90 degrees. Brings it back down and then goes to the other side. So we're starting to bring in, you can go ahead and keep it up, Deanna. We're starting to bring in some unilateral training here, but we're not just staying on one side, so we're not punishing one side. We're just starting to build up that unilateral strength. And we're starting to teach her that the top is really the important part we're looking for. So she doesn't just kind of skip and use momentum through that once we go to single leg, which is the next step in the progression. So again, what I'm gonna look for here as a coach is just to make sure that she's not sacrificing hip extension from lumbar extension. All right, so if we can get her to the point there where we're doing about 10 to 12 per side or total, um, 20 to 24 total good reps, then we're gonna to progress to single leg. So the same position applies. In this case, I would just have her take her right knee, pull it up as high as just above 90 degrees of hip flexion. Then she's going to keep this here and she's going to focus on one side at a time. She's going to go down as far as she can comfortably, come up and pause at the top, like the tabletop for a second. So just go four reps on each side, Deanna. And again, our benchmark here, depending on the individual, is about 12 to 15 reps per side, good reps, which means they can hold at the top like they're pausing or posing for a picture. And just do a few reps on the other side down and straight up. I want to make sure that she keeps her feet flat. I don't want to see her going into like a calf raise where she's elevating her heel. All right, good. Just kind of sit down, take a break for a second. So then there's two types of progressions or two directions that will progress here. We can either add range of motion by elevating the feet on the bench, or we can add resistance. And at this point, that's where I like to use kind of an undulating model and cycle the two. So first, let's talk about adding range of motion. We'll bring in a second bench. Deanna, you let me know distance-wise if that's good for you. Right here. Yep. Is that too far? No? Okay, so let's go single leg. Good. Up and down. Good. So I would say that's a little far for you. Let's bring it in a little bit. That's what happens when you first start doing these. You adjust it. Good. Make sure you're not, your heels a little more on top of the bench for me. There we go. Okay, so she goes into flexion. Now she can go lower than she was going before, and we're bringing in a little bit more hamstring. Good. And a quick little tip here, if you notice, I'm gonna take a break for a second, Deanna, this bench that we're using where her feet are on is actually just a bit higher than the bench she's got her shoulders on. I would normally, if we're working in that case, reverse it, because I want her shoulders higher than her feet so she doesn't feel like when she gets to the top, that she's gonna to get toppled over the back of the bench. So just be careful that you're using things that are of equal height, and often we might find, if we have one bench that's a little higher than the other, we're gonna put the shoulders on the bench that are a little bit higher, all right? So we would, that's how we would increase range of motion. If we wanna increase the load, we would go back to the single leg variation. And if she's flexing this hip, so go ahead and flex that hip again for me. I'm gonna have her put the dumbbell like this, and she can pick which hand she wants to hold it. Some people like to go same side, other people like to cross. That's my preference. I feel like that balances me out more, because I got my right shoulder down 
and my left foot. So I got kind of that cross connection thing going. So she's just gonna hold it in place and then she's gonna go through her movement. Just show a few reps on each side. And go one more. Excellent, and then go to the other side. So while she's doing this, I'm biased. I wanna explain why I'm really biased towards the single leg variations. That's where I wanna go first. Why? Because most of us have one side that's a little bit stronger than the other. So when we're looking at starting with hip thrust, I'm a bigger fan of working to progress single leg variations before we just go to the double leg variations. And if we go to the double leg variations, we'll use those in as well. That's where you just get crazy with the barbell. And in that case, we would just go either shoulders elevated or um, basically shoulders on the floor with your hips, which is a shorter range of motion. The other nice thing about not biasing towards the barbell and really staying with the single leg progressions is because it doesn't require as much setup and as much equipment. If I'm in a big box gym, sometimes it's really tough to set up barbell hip thrusts, especially from the floor. You might not have the hip pad, right? right? It's, a, it's a pain in the butt to find the right bench to find something to, to put the bench up against that you're not pushing the bench away from you. In this case, all I need is a regular bench and a dumbbell, and I have several progressions to go to from there. So that's how we progress it. Deanna, you have anything anything to add? No. Nope. Because you use this one a lot. <laughs> I do. Uh, you covered it. Just using that pad if you're using the barbell for sure. Absolutely. All right, there you have it.